We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hello, everybody. This is Jutta Kroll speaking uh, as a moderator of this NRI's collaborative, collaborative session. <laughs> Um, we are still waiting for some um, national and regional initiative representatives who are supposed to be speakers in this session. So please bear with me for another two minutes and then at 10 past five, we will definitely start this session. Thank you for your patience. Hi, Jutta, can you hear us now? Can anyone yeah. hear us in the Zoom room? Please, if you could post in the chat, if you can. Yes, we can hear you. And I see that you have some of these speakers that I can't see in Zoom. Uh, they yes. are uh, away. So we have, uh, that's what I was saying, Yuta. Yes, good that we can hear each other now. We have Mary here, Jennifer, Kosi, Giacomo. A number of us are in the, in the audience. That's wonderful. Okay, thank you. So then I think we can start the session. Thank you to all the attendees uh, for your patience. Um, this is the collaborative session of the National Regional Initiatives, and it's titled Securing the Trusted Internet Now for the Generations to Come. I'm very glad for your invitation to me to moderate this session. Um, and let me just give you a short introduction to what we are talking about today. Um, we have a situation where around the world, one third of the users of the internet is under the age of 18. So that is the generation that has already entered the internet environment and there are future generations to come. It's our task and our responsibility to make the internet as safe and as secure as possible for users of today and for users uh, of the future. During the pandemic, we've seen a huge rise in internet usage uh, over the last uh, now nearly two years. Uh, and internet uh, increased internet usage comes along with potentially increased risk of harm to the users. But also it opens new opportunities, especially for young users where the internet should be a school, a library and a playground at the same time. And all these areas need to be safe for young users. We've heard uh, today in a session organized by the OEC, OECD that uh, from the uh, core project, the Children Online Research and Evidence Project that uh, still we have a situation where uh, conduct contact and conduct risks uh, occur to children and they have given research evidence that this, this happens especially for children in phases of transition. What does this mean? It means, for example, young users who do their first steps into the internet. For users, young users who have for the first time their individual own device to go online also for young users who make their first steps into, for them so far unknown areas of the internet, be this social media or any certain app. So in all these phases, uh, they are in a situation where it might come to riskful behavior, to contact to unknown people, to riskful conduct of their own. And that is what is addressed by the work uh, of several organizations, institutions, and individuals around the world. So we will hear in the first part of this session from representatives from national and regional initiatives who are quite active in this area. And uh, I would like to, to ask these uh, representatives of national and regional initiatives to introduce themselves. I just will give you an overview on whom to expect to speak in, in the following 
nearly 60 minutes to come. We have Cosi Amesino from the Ministry of Economic, Economy and Finances from Benin, IGF, then for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF, Jennifer Chang from the Dot Asia Foundation. For the Italian IGF, Giacomo, Comun, uh, Giacomo Massone from the former uh, European Broadcasting Union. Uh, then we have for the Spanish IGF, Felix Hernandez and Jorge Perez. Uh, we have for Mauritius IGF, and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't uh, pronounce your name well, but I try. Mahendrana Fusco Paul, welcome to the session. Then from Namibia IGF, Josafat uh, for the West African IGF, my former MAC colleague, Mary Aduma. Very welcome to you, Mary, again. And also from uh, former MAC member, uh, Sena Buhar for the Lebanon IGF. Welcome to all these speakers. And please, uh, I think we start with Kossi. The floor is yours. Thank you. I'm Kossi from Benin. Our topic to this afternoon is contain the children online. In our community, we have two kind of children, the children from poor family, that kind of children don't have access to internet on a computer, don't have access on internet when we smartphone and something like that. When we have their image or video online that is doing in some party event by the person coming from the same family with them is not their job, is not done by them, themselves. We have the people who use the phone or the computer from their, mav, their mothers, their fathers. Those people have two kinds of problems. Sometimes they have to ascend to attend the image or video. We cannot it is not the video for their age. Video mom, mom supposed to have for themselves. They, they give his smartphone to the children, and children sometimes look some video which talking about sex and something like that. We, 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 we remember one problem we have in our country, for example, one children who go and test something with, he saw every time in their mom smartphone, they need to test it with their brother. We don't know why they have idea. But every time they have a video in their mom phone, and we think is something good, you are supposed to test to you know if, what they can give. But that is some bad situation we can have when uh, the whole people don't know how to protect information the children can access on the computer on uh, on the laptop. Some families give smartphone to their children because they need to contact them when they are school, when they are home. It's the people who are making jobs sometimes don't have time to look at their children. They give them smartphone to contact them. But sometimes they don't control what is in the smartphone. Some people use that, some children use that smartphone to go online is normally to make research, but they don't make research. They go and see some video, bad video, who cannot normally be used for from them, but you use it. And sometimes we ask ourselves, is it possible for us, as government, to make something for that people? Normally, yes. We have some strategies. We have child protection policy, we have also a child protection digital code, but that is document. Document don't work really in, with the people. 
their responsibility for parents, their responsibility for school, their responsibility for whole person also. The thing we do in school, for example, is let the digital IT project managers in a ministry, education ministry, to go to the school where you have the platform for students. The platform is, we supposed to use that platform to make research or study. We, we, we make the fit on the platform to let children only use the information concerning their study. It's not possible for them at school to use any kind of information. You have our- Kossi, yeah. Kossi, if I may interrupt you, we only have 60 minutes for this session. So I, I think it would be good if you could come to a close end and then we go further with the other seven speakers we have in this session. And we will get back to the examples that you have already been drawn on. Okay, clo cl closely. Uh, in our ministry, for example, for education, we ask the people who are charged in technology to make uh, that student in all our countries have internet, but only for education. Thank you. Thank you so much. Then we come to Jennifer Chung for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. And I would be happy if you could focus on what are the concrete problems affecting child online safety in in the communities there? And uh, could you give an overview on policies at local, that means national levels? Thank you. Thank you, Yuta. This is uh, Jennifer from the Asia Pacific Regional IGF Secretariat. I guess uh, this year at our, our, our hybrid meeting that was hosted both online and also in Kathmandu, Nepal, the main emphasis really was on digital information literacy and e-education for children and youth who are in underserved communities and rural areas. I think the very first thing we look at is the cost of access. Without that, they are actually not even online. I think very much emphasis is placed uh, on trying to get these uh, young children and also uh, youth online to be able to continue their, their e-education and education curriculum. And then subsequently, the, the onus is really to, to actually place emphasis on net safety. There is capacity building both in terms of uh, the young users as well as the educators and parents. And because of the COVID pandemic, since everything has been put online, there has been a greater need to be able to push out these education curriculum in a way that will be beneficial and not detrimental to children and young students. I think this is not only in uh, economies in, in Asia Pacific that is, uh, has less resources. This also happens in economies such as Japan and Australia. Uh, in, in countries that are rich in resources. It is actually quite surprising for us to find out that 5% of school children in Japan do not have access to be able to continue their homework or, or the, even their online courses. So that is the very first thing that we were talking about, I guess, in the regional level. And then in terms of net safety, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, not only, I guess, in the education sector, it is also a, a big multi-stakeholder collaborative effort because when we're looking at uh, content online, or if we're looking at content that we're trying to push to or, or trying to allow uh, students to access, there is definitely uh, an emphasis placed on trying to protect them as well as give them agency because young children and also youth, they also have a right to their education, of course, and uh, the, the, the emphasis really needs to be placed on how to use the net safely, how to be able to uh, allow students to connect and to, to be able to continue their education without being uh, uh, preyed on by, by an unsavory or malicious uh, attempts to exploit them. So I, I wanna wrap here very quickly because I want to also hear more from NRI colleagues to see what best practices are uh, uh, in your point of view. Thank you, Yuta. Thank you, Jennifer. Then I directly hand over to Giacomo Mazzone for the Italian inter uh, regional initiative. 
Thank you very much for the floor. Um, Giacomo Mazzoni from the Italian IGF. Uh, the child protection was one of the main topic of the IGF this year in November, held in Cosenza in hybrid form. There were um, various uh, workshops dedicated to this issue, and the issue was also discussed in others. We have the participation of the Ministry of Education um, at the event, because the, as has been mentioned by my previous speaker, the, the problem of the uh, access to the learning and to the didactical experience was really hampered by the COVID uh, crisis. Um, as you know, in Italy, we call it that because it's a didactic at distance, remote uh, uh, learning experience. And so the problem is that um, this immediately evoke the problem of the lack of access, the lack of computer facilities and uh, electronic devices accessible to the children, the lack of education by the parents uh, and for helping the children to, in accessing the, these courses. So was a very bad uh, test for the country and we discovered that um, we are very vulnerable and that there is a part of the population even if it's small but uh, was totally cut out from the didactical experience mm, the second um, main problem that uh, on which we have focused in italy this year has been uh, a shocking experience that happened at the very beginning of the year uh, in in Sicily, a 12-year student um, watching on TikTok some uh, dangerous exercise, uh, copied this exercise and she died. She was alone at home. Nobody can uh, help her that she suffocate. This was a huge scandal, of course. Um, there was a huge polemic on all over the media about the dangers of the internet. Uh, and um, as an immediate reaction, the authority for the privacy that normally is not competence on that, but was the only that um, think that they can intervene, uh, made a ban for uh, TikTok and uh, other um, social media, um, saying that until they will not prove to the Italian authorities that they are able to uh, verify the age, they, they cannot operate in Italy. So this was shocking, but um, in one month, uh, uh, especially TikTok, that was the most um, under accusation, reacted and they put in place some measures. Um, <clears throat> of course, these measures have not worked properly. So a journalist inquiry made in September showed that even after the measure had been implemented, it was was still possible to bypass the, the, the new rules and the new uh, system of control. Uh, not, nothing is perfect, of course, but the debate is there. And uh, <clears throat> now we are in the course of the implementation of the law, but this probably will be the next round. And I will mention more in the next intervention, if any. Back Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Giacomo, and especially for outlining this horrible example, uh, I think we, we can go back to what prevention strategies and measures probably would be best to address those, those events. So I'm looking for someone from the Spanish IGF. Do we have Felix Hernandez or Jorge Perez Martinez in the room? I don't see them in Zoom. If they aren't with you in the room in Katowice, I would first go to the Mauritius IGF, and that is Mahendranath Buskopal. Mahendranath, you have the floor. Thank you, Jutta. And hello, all colleague speakers and respected IGF participants. I am Mahendranath Buskopal from Mauritius IGF. And actually, I'm not on site, but online. Let me start by emphasizing that the internet is a basic necessity and its relation pertaining to child online safety. Because uh, as one of the colleagues just said, uh, our theme for the idea which we held, which we held uh, in November this year, well, had also this perspective leading to child online safety. 
So the COVID situation has highlighted the importance of the internet and how much we rely on it as a society. So on a particular note is the fact that children have had to make use of the internet in order to be able to adequately follow the classes in sports. Numerous issues have been identified with regards to online schooling, such as the impact on the social development of children, lack of motivation, or even a lack of engagement with the material. We shall, however, be focusing on cybersecurity and child online safety. Nowadays, more children uh, in the world, as it is a case also in Mauritius, are becoming a frequent visitor to the internet. Using the internet, they face more cyber threats than cyber security benefits. The cyber threats include unregulated online gaming. On its own, online gaming is not necessarily harmful. However, an increasing number of games are now using malicious tactics to force children into buying more and more. These methods might be similar to online betting. Over the past few years, however, we have seen the rise of more and more predatory tactics on the side of social media, such as using, using shorter videos to keep holding on the attention of younger viewers. This, I would like to highlight, was reflected uh, at our annual IGF meeting this year. We have also seen a massive jump in smartphone access. This addiction can also lead to the propagation to harmful trends. Using the social media, not only children get ads, but adults also. But the malvertising and harmful ads are commonly faced by children. These ads on the internet are not benign. Ads can be used to deliver malware, a process known as malvertising. Additionally, additionally ads can be especially harmful on the internet and are more likely to reach the younger audience. We are lucky in Mauritius as several initiatives, laws have been taken by the state to help eradicate online threats facing our children. They are the Data Protection Act, the Information and Communication Technologies Act, and the Computer Misuse and Cybercrime Act. Apart from the indicated laws, the National Computer Board, which is under the aegis of the Ministry of ICT, in Mauritius has set up the computer emergency and response team. The main role is to handle and coordinate information security issues at the national level in Mauritius. A national online system was also introduced in Mauritius under the name Mauritian Cybercrime Online Reporting System. This allows the public to report cybercrimes occurring on social media securely. It also helps to provide advice to help in recognizing and avoid common types of cybercrime which takes on social media websites. At our level, child online safety initiatives can be summarized into three headings, practices and mechanism, roles and responsibilities in taking forward the internet, and also public and private sector accountability. If ever we have any questions pertaining to the three headings that I just said, I would be happy to, to respond to them. Jul Juta, thank you so much. Thank you uh, for your in uh, intervention. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear how, how much more resources have already undertaken. Uh, we now go to the Namibia IGF. Yosafat Vikandra Kiko. Are you there in the room or on the Zoom? Yosafat? I can't see him on the Zoom list. So again, I would say we go further. Mary, I know you are in the room in Katowice and I would like to give you the floor right now for the best African idea. Thank you, Yuta, for giving me the floor. Uh, my name is Mary Uduma. I'm also speaking for both uh, West Africa IGF as well as what happens in Nigeria. Though, our, though in uh, West Africa, our theme was not on uh, you know, child safety, but we did inclusion. And uh, 
in, as an extension, we needed the children to be included. And um, um, as the preamble, I want to say that our region is suffering from um, terrorism crisis. And we found out that our children are being recruited online to, to go to terrorism. So it's a, it's a, a, a thing of concern for us just because we, are, we have seen COVID had um, brought about more, more children, school children going online. So th there is the issue of their veering from the education they're supposed to, to, to concentrate on and visit other sites and get recruited to be terrorists. So it's, it's important that we make sure that they are not excluded. The children are not excluded and, and, and also they are, not, um, they are not recruited online. So what do we do? We, 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 we want to see where um, uh, innovators or creators of content would take into consideration the needs of the children and not just uh, sell their, 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 their software but the need of the children should be taken into consideration. And we also want to see that parents are interested, teachers are, in, are interested. And at Nigerian level, we, we, we are, there's a, a law now that, or a, a policy now in Ministry of Education that um, all teachers should be uh, uh, IT literate so that they can guide the children if they are going to use um, the new tool called the, the internet or their devices to assess their classrooms so that it will not go beyond assessing classroom to doing other things. And so there's a sensitization program that is going on in Nigeria uh, for we, um, teachers, parents, and also the educators. Uh, so that, that, that's one of the things we've been doing because it's only when we catch them young, tell them about the cybersecurity issues in uh, in internet usage that will be able to secure their future. So that's my intervention for now. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much. Uh, we turn now to Sina Buhar from the Lebanon IGF. Sina, the floor is yours. Hello, Yuta. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, I miss uh, being with you all. Um, I'm Zina Buhar from the Lebanese IGF. According to the statistics of the Cyber Crime Office in Lebanon, the number of reported cases of sexual exploitation and extortion against children increased from 24 cases uh, of defamation and one case of kidnapping and the murder threat in 2016. This number increased to 172 in 2019 and more in 2020. That was uh, uh, an alarming uh, augmentation uh, to unite all necessary efforts from the government, uh, the private institution, the civil society and internet providers to, to join uh, their efforts in order uh, to guide the, the children and provide them with skills that enable them to make the most of the digital uh, world and prepare them uh, for the requirement of the digital revolution in addition to directing them uh, towards safe and uh, responsible use of the internet. In fact, since, uh, since a few years uh, now and every year, the Higher Council for Childhood in Lebanon, which is a council under the Ministry of Social Affairs, uh, dedicates the months of February to the internet safety as a way to help children, parents and teachers to create a safer uh, cyber environment uh, for children. A nationwide awareness campaign is organized in collaboration with different partners from different stakeholders. Uh, in Lebanon, NGOs are actively engaged on the national level when it comes to prevention of uh, child abuse. Uh, through capacity building and development. Some, uh, some organizations also are currently working with the Ministry of Public Health to integrate child protection into the healthcare systems uh, in Lebanon and working with the Ministry of uh, Interior to provide training uh, on uh, child uh, 
protection for both the ISF, I mean, the internal security forces and municipal uh, police uh, agents. Um, if I may share the two activities uh, that were recently uh, done in Lebanon to build capacity, it's in addition to the awareness campaign, it's uh, the um, uh, drafting uh, or distribution of an internet the safety booklet and the launch of a uh, competition uh, called the Champ of the Internet. The booklet uh, was prepared in collaboration between multiple stakeholders also, including the, the ISPs and the government and the NGOs. It was uh, both in both forms, uh, digital and uh, also printed and distributor uh, distributed uh, for free in um, wherever possible to the risks that might face uh, children and teach them how to act smartly while using the internet. That was an easy, fun and accessible way for children and their parents to learn more about uh, the, the cyber uh, safety. The competition, uh, it, it's, uh, it's called the Champ of the Internet competition. Uh, children uh, were requested to, to to create artwork linked to online safety. For example, there was two category, age categories. The, the first uh, category was uh, for the age nine to 12, and the second category is uh, from 13 to 17 years old. The theme of the first uh, category, the younger category was self-esteem and respect of others on the internet. And for the second category, it was management of the digital reputation and ident identity. So each participant can submit at least one artwork in any form, whether a poster or a drawing or a short video of two minutes in any language, Arabic, French, or English. Uh, so the, sub the submission should certainly uh, respect uh, intellectual property. It shouldn't be copied. It, uh, uh, it, should, uh, it shouldn't be presented in, in other competitions. There was a selection uh, committee and criteria and uh, tablets were distributed to the, uh, to the winners. These mainly were the, the most known activities that were done in Lebanon. Thank you, you. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Sena. Uh, I think you've given us the perfect segue to, to step forward to examples of good initiatives implemented at local levels to respond to the issues. I, I would like to summarize what we've heard because there are so many uh, similarities, but also differences in the local and national situation. We've heard uh, from, from Benin that uh, there is a lack of education that, uh, and that does not count also for young children, but also for their parents who don't have the skills to guide their children and who sometimes uh, it, it, uh, the, the, um, the situation is very difficult because the children use the devices of their parents without any guidance not to access age inappropriate content. Then we've heard from, from Jennifer from Asia that still in a region like Japan, for example, 5% of school children don't have access to the internet, although they were uh, supposed to have online education during the pandemic and that, that it's more, uh, more difficult in underserved areas where uh, children are lacking of access and of digital information literacy. Um, we've heard from Italy an especially uh, a special uh, difficult case where a child came to death uh, while she, she copied a challenge that she had seen on TikTok. And so that featured very prominently in the Italian IGF. Um, where also it became more obvious that children's access to education was hampered during the pandemic uh, when uh, they were uh, supposed to have online education. Um, what I found really uh, confusing was that uh, we've heard about this mall advertising, delivering malware by, uh, by advert 
advertising uh, in uh, from Mahendrana and that uh, also they faced like in many other regions that the internet is a basic necessity which became more obvious due to the pandemic which was highlighted that how much we depend on the internet and on the other hand we see uh, several several uh, situations where there are more threats to children especially than benefits um, from the internet. You've already given us some examples from uh, on the uh, legislation that you've taken uh, from the uh, reporting system that is in place for users. And I think we would like to hear, hear more from you how this is working effectively and what are the roles and responsibilities of the stakeholders involved. Uh, another issue that, that um, was mentioned by Maria Duma is the recruitment of children for terrorism activities. Uh, especially during the pan pandemic when children were uh, spent more time online because they were supposed to um, to have their education online. Uh, she um, mentioned also uh, that IT literacy is very features very prominently on the agenda. And last but not least, especially from, from Lebanon, we heard the increase of cases uh, on sexual sexual exploitation of children uh, on child abuse and uh, how necessary it is to join efforts, efforts with internet providers. That is one issue that I would like you to address in your statements now to come. How far have you come with uh, platform responsibility? Uh, is there kind of cooperation with the platform providers? Do we see that digital literacy education as one strand of prevention? Uh, and uh, how far uh, have you come in your regions and countries so far? And uh, I would open up the floor also for not only for the panelists, but for participants in the room to, to answer to these questions. Uh, and because we have only short time, I would like to bring forward a question that was put into the chat by Fred Clark. He would like to know if there are alternatives to keep children and teens protected from harmful, dangerous games. Uh, can any one of you, uh, if you have in your region or in your country, laws or norms to protect children from access to harmful games? So with this, I would like to open the floor again for panelists, but also from speak for, for participants from the room, if you would like. Giacomo, if I may, because I yes, raised please. the issue. The, um, uh, as I said, the first reaction was that uh, there was a ban for TikTok that, that lasts for three months until they will not be able to put in place some measures. The measures are, as I mentioned, that you you apply for getting a TikTok um, username and then you receive a call and you, in the call uh, they try to understand if you are uh, a child or not. Of course, this is not perfect and um, there's been proved that that was not the the perfect solution. But anyway, was a, a way to calm the situation that was very tense. Uh, <clears throat> and since then, in the transposition of the uh, audiovisual media service directive, that is one of the instruments of the European Union for the media, has been included a clause that um, give a responsibility for this kind of cases to the media authority in Italy. So now uh, the law has been approved just a few days ago and now the authority of media agicom in italy and a special committee that is called committee media minors they have the duty to prepare a regulation uh, for the social media platforms uh, trying to prevent also this kind of things thank you giacomo just to to point that out exactly do you think that proper age verification would help to solve this it such issues that you've been facing in Italy? The, 
you can be you can do stupid things even if you are uh, adult so <laughs> i don't think that this prevents <laughs> but of course the, uh, the the fact that she was alone at home uh, the, the child because the, the, the parents were going to work and she was left alone at home um, uh, was the reason why this um, young lady died uh, so having an age verification is part of the solution well, part of the possible solution. Yes, I agree on Thank that. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm going to put a link uh, into the chat uh, for research that um, Presidio, a research organization from uh, United Kingdom, have done on on dangerous challenges uh, and hoaxes uh, on TikTok, uh, and um, they uh, uh, it also has some recommendations for prevention of these cases. I'll put it in the chat in a minute. Uh, and please, uh, other panelists and participants, go forward. Just speak out or raise your hand uh, for me can to I, see whether you want to take I the floor. Come? Yes, please, of course. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I'm in line with uh, my colleague speaker who just spoke. The question of uh, age, I don't think uh, uh, we might go for it. I'm just speaking out of our experience from Mauritius and the Indian Ocean Island region. When we go for advocacy program on child safety online, we talk to parents mainly. And uh, this is something that might help. I still believe that if there are things that are happening with children online, uh, parents should be made aware of what are the things that they need to do. These are the things that we do. And in Mauritius, we, all, we have also initiated the Helpline Mauritius. It is an online counseling service where uh, it's not only for children. It's more for parents who come to us online and just say, my son or my daughter is doing such and such thing. How can we help? So these are the things that we believe that it is a responsibility of the parents to look after these things and also to help the kids. Thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for your intervention and especially for pointing out that reporting is, is part of effective prevention uh, strategies. I have two, two hands raised from the floor and I take that in this order. I see Mahi Kirindi Goda and then Abdel Jalil Bahabong. Uh, please, you to go ahead. Mahi first and then Abdel Jalil. We also have um, people here that raise their hands. Okay, then with the two from the Zoom room and then I go to the, to the room back in Katowice. Mahi, okay. please, you have the yes. floor. I think I am audible. I'm Mahi from uh, IGF Sri Lanka. Uh, first of all, regarding uh, to discuss regarding this game addiction, I just want to mention internet addiction was not identified as a disease, but uh, gaming addiction has been identified as a disease in uh, IDL 11. So it has been a, a, a very uh, severe problem for the uh, children as uh, with the pandemic. With the pandemic, uh, children are opt to uh, go online and work online, even from the primary schools uh, to the higher level of education. All the children have the only means of education through online. So because of that, we have uh, identified in Sri Lanka, there were many uh, cases of internet gaming addictions and many medical professionals has complained that they have been uh, receiving number of issues uh, related to gaming addiction. So uh, actually what we identified uh, within our communications with uh, the uh, community as well as the uh, children and uh, the medical <clears throat> specialist. So what we identified is uh, we have to advocate and we have to share knowledge in between parents, teachers, and the students, because uh, <clears throat> the generation gap and the technological know-how gap in between the generations made this issue a war to a vast level. So uh, we have uh, prepared some videos, we have prepared some uh, actually films uh, to educate these uh, people. So uh, 
in my point we need to address as a uh, not as a nation as a world uh, to prevent internet gaming addiction which is uh, at the moment unesco has done few guidelines on uh, development of in, uh, gaming and games uh, not to make children uh, being abused through games so that those are our points from uh, IGF Sri Lanka thank you very much thank thank you for your intervention and now we go to Abdel Jalil okay, Abdel thank yes thank you so much my name is Abdel Jalil I'm coming from Chad so uh, from uh, IGF Chad so uh, in Chad uh, also we organize several internet day so it was our uh, fourth edition. So we learned a lot of things because a student need to be trained. And some students also in the school, we see them, they know more than their parents. And some parents are not educated. That's a big challenge also. And uh, we do some uh, campaign as a school in Jemena, it's capital, and in East in Abisha also. So we did some uh, campaign and we learned a lot of, because I was one of the team also. So there's some harassment also for the girl, most of girl. So uh, the power of education or the culture, uh, if there are some harassment, uh, girl cannot uh, tell the parent. So they keep uh, quiet. It, it was big challenge because uh, that's when girl he share uh, experience because some guys tell her to send his email after sending email come in this place come in this place they abuse her and after that um, uh, we uh, tell her that uh, to go uh, to the school and to the parent to the police also because uh, we know the people who send the message only to to have started a big challenge also i think that education and training because when we went to school some uh, students need uh, practical uh, training also how to use facebook parameters twitter tiktok most of people use tiktok and whatsapp and some people can download easily whatsapp photo video and can mix it the video and can put the pornography thing something like this and they can put pressure to the girl so i think that uh, now we can see with the minister of education and unicef how to do a, a permanent program because most of the students at the school and parents cannot uh, uh, easily uh, do some survey. It's very really difficult because all the time they are at the school. So we need to have a new approach with the, with the teacher at the school and to have uh, uh, how to use uh, internet and social media at the school. So these are the, the new things that we need to implement. I think that can help also. So, some people who have harassment they cannot talk so we need to have some strategy psychology not technical side so this is my may i ask you to, to thank you so much to your time thank, okay. thank you thank you so much and we have now people in the room in katowice who would like to take the floor yeah. please go ahead uh, my name is uh, naza nicholas from uh, uh, tanzania igf and uh, in uh, IGF this year, we had uh, a, a very specific topic, you know, addressing the issue of uh, online harms, and uh, specifically, we were focusing on um, on uh, how to develop uh, a legislation around um, um, around uh, uh, child uh, safety online uh, to have a specific law. So far, Tanzania has no specific law to protect uh, children online, uh, despite having the Cyber Security Act of 2015, um, it is not specifically geared towards uh, kids um, because uh, on the statistics, we have about 29 million people who are internet users. And uh, 42 million people in Tanzania are mobile subscribers. So by extension, you have more than uh, 42 million children actually accessing online harms, uh, accessing uh, mobile phones and uh, getting uh, harmed online. Uh, because uh, just imagine the kids who are in Africa, a village somewhere, and uh, their, fa their father you know, bought uh, a smartphone phone for, the, for the grandmother and the kids, 
uh, sneak out on grandmother and uses the uh, the mobile phone, the smartphone, to be able to access online uh, uh, content which is not uh, geared towards them. So specifically, what we have done as uh, uh, IGFI SOC Tanzania chapter is to engage. Uh, 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 policy makers. Uh, we have formed uh, a, a working group that involves uh, all um, uh, multi stakeholders. So we can be able to uh, push for a law, a new law that will be able to protect, you know, uh, children online. And uh, we, we believe that uh, having a, a specific law on this will, will go uh, uh, far and wide in terms of protecting uh, children uh, uh, who actually we need them to be able to be uh, take, uh, uh, take keys, but uh, they have to appropriate uh, to, uh, to access uh, the appropriate uh, content. Um, thank you for your intervention. You. I do think there are still uh, representatives of national regional initiatives in the room who want to speak up yeah. and we have only yes, five minutes left. Person. Yes, please. Thank you very much. My name is Wisdom Donko uh, from Ghana IGF. I just have a few um, points uh, to make. Um, yes, um, I'm aware there are so many reporting platforms, but the question we should be asking ourselves is that um, how available at this platform to our parents. That is one uh, aspect we need to look at. And then the other aspect is uh, with regards to uh, our various media houses. You realize that even, uh, for example, Ghana, uh, the media houses, sometimes you see them advertising certain content that uh, doesn't order well for the child. But yet, you still have government uh, also sit down and then they look on, though there are some policies and all that, but then nobody seems to care. So we, should, we have to look at that uh, critically and see what we can do in that regard. Uh, we need the media as well. They also need education when it comes to uh, child online protection. Also, uh, parents as well, I think uh, we mentioned parents, they also need education. We need to educate them. Um, our various educational sectors, especially in the developing world, uh, most of them are not uh, that IT inclined. And then sometimes they, are, they, they also are being caught up in some of these nets and then you see them also um, uh, spreading uh, the information and then they sometimes uh, help children to also use such information. And then the rural communities, as for that, uh, the issue there is huge. Even some of the communities don't even have internet and all that. So we also have to look at that and start including them in the process. And also uh, government uh, in the developing countries, we have this uh, government information centers and then they are supposed to educate uh, the public. And most often you don't see them doing some of these things um, with the reason that they themselves are not even educated. So they are not aware. Even if they are aware, I mean, what are they going to tell the public? So we also need to start looking at that and start educating them so that they can carry out some of this information and educate the, the public. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Wisdom. Thank you for your uh, input to this, this session as well. Uh, to sum up, because we only have two minutes left, uh, uh, one could get a very dystopian impression from all the reports and the, the very uh, difficult issues that you've put up onto the agenda of this session. But on the other hand, I also think that we have uh, lots of good examples already heard from uh, from the different regions. I'm, I'm very glad that the national and regional initiatives have put child online safety so prominently on their agenda because I think it needs a joint effort from all regions around the world 
even though there are differences in the issues uh, and difficulties and problems they face, uh, there are some similarities and there are some uh, possible solutions uh, uh, that we could probably uh, draw on and work on together. Uh, in the chat, uh, Fred Clark uh, suggested to compile a list of dangerous games, harmful contact challenges uh, that people may face, uh, that children may face, and then try to address this properly. Uh, I would say that is be must be an ongoing effort and a joint effort, and who would be better better positioned uh, than national and regional initiatives uh, to do so. But at the same time, I would say we do not need a list of dangerous uh, issues. We also need a list of instruments that have been working, that will work in the future, especially in regard of prevention. Education was mentioned as, as one very important instrument. And we, we know that we have different situations how we can children address with education, especially when it comes to the situation that we have right now that uh, education mainly takes place in an online environment. Uh, the internet could be a safe school for children, but on the other hand, we, then we need to have uh, effective protectional measures and prevention instruments in place. So to, to conclude with a, with a positive outlook on in the future, I would like to refer you to the, uh, in March this year, published general command number 25 on the rights of the child in the digital environment, where the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child has laid down how to understand children's rights to protection, provision, and participation in the digital environment in these days. And there you will find uh, a lot of uh, very useful information how to, how to ensure that children can access the, the uh, digital environment without being endangered. And with that, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you so much for all the participants that have shown interest in, in ch child protection and for all the initiatives that come from the national and regional initiatives on internet governance. Thank you so much for having me as your moderator. I hope you enjoyed the session and looking forward to further cooperation with you.